Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to read classification of steroids. A steroid may be generally may generally be classified within reference to its duration, method, object, and extent of application. Okay, these are the basis of classification. That is duration, maybe temporary or permanent method, object, and extent of application. Classification with reference to duration. Okay. Then A. A is about classification with reference to durations. B. Classification with reference to method. C. Classification with reference to object. And then after it's codifying, consolidating on object. Okay. Yes. Object. And C. Where is C? C. No. Where is D? D. Classification with reference to the extent of application. Okay, extent. So four basis. Uh, there are four basis. Actually, four. Duration, method, object, and extent. These four things you have to remember. Duration. It may be temporary, permanent. Method. It may be mandatory or directory, and object. What are what object may be classification or reference to object? Codifying, consolidating, declaratory, remedial. Enabling, disabling, panel, taxing, explanatory, amending, repealing, curative, and then after this classification reference to extent. And what is in uh, in case of extent? Uh, no, sorry, ex uh, yes, extent of application to say public institute or private institute. Okay. Then first of all, we are going to read classification in reference to durations. So, some are classified as student as temporary student, permanent student. A temporary student is one where its period of operation or validity has been fixed by the student itself. Just an act continues in force unless repealed earlier until the time so fixed. After the expiry of the act, if the legislature wishes to continue it, a temporary student is one where its period of operation or validity has been fixed by the student itself. Such an act continues in force unless repealed earlier until the time so fixed. After the expiry of the act, if the legislation wishes to continue it, a new enactment is required because it's temporary. The finance act is a temporary act and is required to be passed every year. Okay, the finance act is the best example of this. A permanent statute is one where no just period has been mentioned, means no such period has been fixed. But this doesn't mean that this doesn't make the statute unchangeable. Just a statute may be amended or rebuilt by another act. Okay, where time period is fixed, this is temporary. Where it is not so fixed, it is permanent. Then B classification in reference to method. Such a mouth classified its statute as number one, mandatory, imperative, or obligatory statute. Okay. Mandatory, imperative, or obligatory institute. And two, directory or permissive institute. Then let's read. A mandatory institute is one which compels performance of certain things. Compels, the word compel is used here. Performance of certain things or compels that a certain thing must, the word must is used here, must be done in a certain manner or from. A directory institute may direct or permits, it may direct. Okay? So, or permits a thing to be done without compelling its performance. So, it may be taken lightly, just directions or permissions. In some cases, the conditions or forms prescribed by the statute have been regarded as essential to the act or thing regulated by it, and the omission has been held fatal to its validity. In others, just prescriptions have been considered as merely directory, the neglect of them involving nothing more than liability to a penalty, if any, were imposed. For breach of this, the enactment. A mandatory provision has to be strictly observed where a substantial compliance of a directory provision is enough. For example, welfare scheme, welfare acts. These are just directory in nature. But certain laws, uh, for example, IPC, CLPC, these are mandatory in nature, which compels performance of certain things and breach of which may result in miscarriage, in, of miscarriage of justice because it's a uh, kind of serious criminal nature. And welfare schemes, maternity relief act or something like this, which are directory in nature. Uh, because these are 
for the purpose of uh, giving more benefits to the society or people. Classification with reference to object. A statute may be classified with reference to its object as number one, codifying statute, two, consolidating statute, three, declaratory statute, four, remedial statute, five, enabling statute, and six, disabling statute, and also it's not a six, twelve, seven, penal statute, eight, taxing statute, nine, explanatory statute, ten, amending statute, eleven, repealing statute, twelve, corrective for validating statute. How many? Twelve, twelve students are there, so we're going to discuss. Now, codifying, first of all, codifying statute. Codifying statute is one which codifies the law, codifies, okay? In other, or in other words, which purports to state exhaustively the whole of the law upon a specific subject. The code contains the pre-existing provisions, pre-existing provisions, because it just codifies. It just, um, uh, um, uh, just, uh, these things are just embodies in the documentary form. But, uh, this may, pre this may be certain pre-existing provisions in different statutes on subjects as well as common law. Different statutes on the subject, different st statutes as well as common law on it. Common law means unwritten customs or something like this. For instance, the Bill of Exchange Act, 1882. Bill of Exchange Act, 1882. In England, is an act to codify data relating to Bill of Exchange, checks and promissory notes. The Hindu Succession Act, 1956, is a codifying statute with respect to interstate successions among Hindus. The purpose of a codifying statute is to present an orderly and authoritative statement, orderly and as well as authoritative, means uh, which has uh, the power and authority. Authoritative statement of the leading rules of law, statement of what leading rules of law on a given subject, whether those rules are to be found in statute law or common law. These are just codifying. Then consolidating statutes. And best example of this codifying law in case of India is the Hindu Succession Act 1956 or Hindu Marriage Act probably. Then comes consolidating statute. A consolidating statute is one which consolidates the law on a particular subject at one place. Consolidates at one place means which collects the law. Scattered law means uh, laws or uh, provisions which are scattered in very, um, very different places. So it is the collection of those scattered facts or provisions of law. This is what called consolidating. It collects all statutory enactments on a specific subject and gives them the shape of one statute. And which, which minor amendments? Amendments which may be of minor nature, just some minor, if necessary, only if necessary. For example, in England, the Law of Property Act 1925 which consolidated the acts of 1922 and 1924 act number two of 1974 is a consolidating act similarly in australia the new south wales justice act 1902 is a consolidating act in india the code of best example is the code of criminal procedure 1974 that code of criminal procedure 1973 one of 1974 is a consolidating statute relating to criminal procedure the purpose of a consolidating act is to present the whole body of statutory law on a subject in a complete form repealing the earlier acts however a consolidating act may not be a mere compilation compilations of earlier statutes collection means collection of statutes and um, placing them in one place, giving them um, a subject on a complete, forming a complete code or statute or something like this. So then declaratory statute, a declaratory statute is a statute to remove doubts. Declaratory, declare, I declare something. Declaratory statute is a statute to remove doubts, either in the common law or in the statutory law. Common law means it's unwritten, customary, statutory law, state. Stated passing of a declaratory statute becomes desirable. Passing of a declaratory statute becomes desirable when certain expressions in common law statute are being misunderstood. This may happen, for instance, example is necessary. When the courts have been interpreted, a particular expression as connoting a specific meaning which the legislature feels is wrong notions of the expression. In just a case, the legislatures may pass a declaratory statute declaring the correct meaning of that expression, thereby Setting at rest the controversy about the correct meaning of the expressions, mere use of the expression to desire by declared does not necessarily make the statute a declaratory statute. Then comes generally 
A declared state contains a preamble and also the award declared as well as the award enacted. The main objective of such an act is to remove doubts. Main objective is to remove doubts as to the meaning of the existing law. Existing law. There must be some. Um, there must be exist in an existing law. And uh, the purpose of such uh, declaratory statement is to remove doubts as to the meaning of the existing law or to rectify an interpretation which the legislature thinks is wrong. Thus, a statute does not create substantial right. Substantive right. It does not create any right. It just merely declares something which is uh, doubtful in an earlier existing law or statute. It simply declares the law as it is and as it had been at the time when that came into force. A declaratory act has a retrospective operation, but already decided matter. But already decided matters under the act cannot be reopened. So it has the retrospective operation because it declares something which is misunderstood in an earlier act. That's why it has retrospective operation. But uh, decided matters already decided matters which are already, which have already been decided by the court under the act cannot be reopened again. Cannot be reopened. So it's will if, however, during the pendency of an appeal, a declaratory this uh, this is an exception. So if, however, during the pendency of an appeal, a declaratory act is passed, the appeal will be decided on the basis of just act. In England, the territorial waters jurisdiction act 18, 18, 1878. In England, the territorial waters jurisdiction act 1878 and the fresh water fisheries act 1886 are illustrations of declaratory statutes. In India, the income tax amendment act 1985, which added explicitly in addition to two sections 40 of the Income Tax Act 1961 and the Finance Act 1987, amending the definitions of owner of house property in Section 27 are declared acts. Then comes remedial statutes. A remedial statute is one whereby a new favor or a new remedy is conferred. New favor, okay, or a new remedy is conferred. The main object of passing such a statute is to make improvements in the enforcement of one's right or for redress of wrong. Make improvements. Okay. Improvements or is important. Make improvements or for redress of wrongs and remove defects or mistakes in the former law. Of late, any another synonymous expression with socio-economic legislation is being preferred by many. Some illustrations of remedial statutes are the Maternity Benefit Act 1961, Maternity Benefit Act, okay, 1961, remedial statute, and the Workmen's Compensation Act 1923. In many remedial acts, the word for remedy whereof has been used immediately before the language of the enactment. So the word is important here. Which are which is uh, uh, the words are uh, under the quotation for remedy whereof some people, including Bell Blackstone, hold the view that remedial statutes could be enlarging as well as restraining. Okay, it may be enlarging or restraining. The acts could be enlarging when narrow common law was widened or restraining when existing common law has. But right common law right was cut down. It depends. It is probably true that all legislations in a welfare state is enacted with the object of promoting general welfare. Only welfare state. Okay, today we have welfare state, not policy state. So object of promoting general welfare, but certain types of enactments are more responsive to some urgent social demands and also have more primitive and more immediate and visible impact on social vices. By operating more directly to achieve social reforms, a remedial state received liberal constructions and doubts is restored in favor of the person for whose benefit the state is enacted. Liberal constructions, okay? Liberal means a remedial state is remedial state is for the purpose of welfare. Welfare uh, receives liberal constructions and doubt is restored in favor of the person for whose benefit the state is enacted. Okay? Remedial state. New favor or new remedy or improvements or redress of wrong or remove defects or mistake or in other words it can be say socio-economic legislation to welfare. And examples are number one maternity relief sect, benefits sect 1961, two workmen's compensation act 1923 and all it. Then after this enabling institute. An enabling institute is one which enlarges the common law. Enlarges, okay? Expanded means enlarges the common law where it is narrow. If it is narrow, common law is narrow, it makes doing of something lawful, which will not be otherwise lawful. Okay. By an enabling act, the legislature enables something to be done. It empowers at the same time by necessary implications to do the indispensable things for carrying out the object of the legislation. Acts authorizing compulsory acquisitions of land. 
for public not public it's public public benefit of uh, for legalizing public or private new insurance and stuff enabling service acts of right is compulsory acquisition that is of course uh, for the benefit of the public the conditions which have been put by an enabling so here in second line we find what uh, it makes doing of something lawful and which will not be otherwise lawful this is what the purpose for um, example is act authorizing compulsory acquisition of land for public benefit of a of uh, for legalizing public or private new star instances of enabling states then the then comes the conditions which have been put by an enabling act for the public good must be compliance with as they are indispensable the conditions which have been put by an enabling act for the public good must be complied with as they are indispensable just as to the grants power to make rules etc to carry out the purpose of the act and these rules may provide for a number of enumerations enumerated matters in particular and without prejudice to the generality of the foregoing provisions section 49 49a1 and 49a2 of the advocates act 1961 as amended by act 21 of 1964 is an illustration of this kind okay then comes disabling after enabling we are going to do disabling study so disabling study is one which restricts or cuts down a right conferred by the common law a, an act restraining a common law from common law right is a disabling act then comes panel study so a penal statute is one which punishes certain acts or wrongs punishes provides punishments means for example in the penal code then comes such a statute may be in the form of a comprehensive criminal code comprehensive okay criminal code or a lowest number of sections providing punishments for different wrongs some instances of such statute are the indian penal code arms act 1959 prevention of food adulteration act 1954 etc the penalty for the disobedience to the law may be in the form of fine for pressure of property imprisonment and even that so we have seen an example in section 53 of the indian penal code what are the punishments provided where obedience to law is inferenced not by an individual's actions but they imply a common command of the law in the form of punishment the statute is penal okay so as in jurisprudence what do we have find law is according to austin law is the command of the state so this is in the same line as ipc it provides punishment uh, but um, the sang the sanction is a coercive sanction or something a penalty can be imposed only when the letter of the law says so unambiguously and any doubt has to be resolved in favor of the alleged offender then comes taxing statute A taxing statute is one which imposes taxes on income or certain other kinds of transactions. Taxes on what? Income or certain other kinds of taxations. It may be in the form of income tax. I mean, of course, the word tax is the same word. Kind of statute it is income tax, wealth tax, sales tax, gifts tax, etc. The object of such statute is to collect revenues. Revenues means taxes of the government. Tax is levied for public purpose. It is a source of revenue generations for the state. so the money is so collected utilized for welfare activities of the people mostly it is utilized tax can be levied only when stated and equivocally so provides by using express language to that effect and any doubt is resolved in favor of the as it is the taxing statute is very simple and uh, easy to understand explanatory statute an explanatory statute is one which explains the law so such statute is normally enacted with a view to supply an apparent omission or to clarify ambiguity as to the meaning of an expression used in a previous statute explanatory and act enacted for a express purpose of explaining or clearing up doubts as to the meaning of a previous act is an act of explanation or an explanatory statute for instance the royal mines act of 1688 in britain was passed to increase mining certain baser metals while the royal mines act of 1683 was enacted for better explanation of the earlier act hmm. the later is in example of exam uh, explanatory statute then comes amending statute an amending statute is one which makes an addition or to our, our the addition to our operates to change the original law so as to effect an improvement therein or to change means amendment or to make uh, effectively carry out the purpose of which uh, the original law was passed 
as amending statute cannot be called a repealing statute, it is part of the law it amends. Direct Tax Amendment Act 1974, Direct Tax Amendment Act 1966, Direct Tax Law Amendment Act 1987, Taxation Laws Amendment, Amendment to every year, right? Amendment Act 1962, Taxation Laws Amendment Act 1970, and Taxation Laws Amendment Act 1984, Criminal Law Amendment Act 1983, or Land Acquisition Amendment Act 1984 are examples of amending acts. After this repealing, then carry T for validating statute, then classification and reference to extent of applications. Uh, repealing statute. A repealing statute is one which repels an earlier statute. Repels, okay? Uh, so, that these revocations or terminations, repeals or revocations or terminations, may be by express or implicit language or implicit language of the statute or may, may be in, by necessary implication also express implication, implied Explicit or explicit language. For instance, as the Hyderabad District Municipal Act 1956 was a repealing act, which repelled the Hyderabad Municipality and Town Committee Act 1951. Similarly, the Code of Criminal Prostor 1973 Act number. This is an example for the Criminal Prostor 1973 Act number two of 1974 repelled and reenacted the Code of Criminal Prostor. First of all, it repelled. Secondly, it reenacted the Code of Criminal Prostor 1894, um, 1898. Corrective of our validating statute. A corrective or validating statute is one which is passed to cure defects in prior law or to validate legal proceedings. Instruments or acts of public and private administrative authorities within the absence of such an act will be void for want of conformity. No conformity or want of conformity with existing legal requirements, but which will have been valid if the statute has so provided at the time of enacting. The provision of a validating statute is to remove the cases of ineffectiveness or invalidity of actions or proceedings, which are validated by a legislative measure. After that, what we'll read classification and reference to the extent of applications that is. Public statute and private statute is very simple and easy. A public statute is one which relates to a matter of public policy. Just a statute may be general, local, or personal in nature. Public, okay, public policy is general, local, or personal in nature. A private statute concerns to with uh, matters which are individual in nature or is related to a body which has no public consequence. In the United Kingdom, UK, proof of a public act is not necessary in a court, but a private act has to be proved. Okay. According to the Interpretation Act, Interpretation Act 1998 of England, all statutes passed after 1850 will be public statutes and will be taken judicial notice or of unless countries provided in the statute itself. The origin of private act seems to be in orders made by the Parliament upon petitions of individuals to wanted redressal of private grievance because no remedy of them was available in common law. Done. It's finished here. Thank you. Thanks for watching. This video is about the kinds of statutes, I think, yes, classification of statutes, okay? Thank you, thanks for watching. If you like my channel, please do not forget to subscribe and please do not forget to give, well, do not forget to comment, okay, and share it. Thank you, thanks for watching.